Um, let me take a few minutes, and just transitioning rather rapidly here, and do more of something uh, on a personal level for our devotional, for our own heart, that our own heart would be um, <clears throat> fixed on Jesus, focused on Jesus, uh, loving him. I have noticed um, in my years of pastoral ministry and teaching ministry, there are pendulum shifts, there are swings, and, 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 and usually it's a good, there's a new emphasis comes on something that has been lacking, and the emphasis of the last, I'd say five years or so at least, has been realizing not just that we love Jesus, but how much he loves us, that to receive the Father's love, to be, to, to, to realize that we can't love him unless he loves us first, and so that's super important. I hope that we know that, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I want to go back to the other end of the pendulum and say, <clears throat> we need to receive the Father's love. We are loved by the Father, <clears throat> but it's important we love him as well. It's not just, here I am, love on me. It's, it's, it's a call of our life to love onto the Father, to love Jesus, to come to him. So you know the story, it's in Luke chapter uh, 7, <clears throat> in verse 36, it says, One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flax of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair, the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered her and said, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. <clears throat> when they could not pay him, he canceled the debt of both. Which of them will love him more? Here's the question we're asking. Not how much are we being loved by God, but how much are we loving on Jesus? How much are we pursuing him? Simon answered them, the one, I suppose, for whom the can he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is a beautiful story of, of, of a woman who is, is not, uh, not necessarily acting initially out of, like, I'm so loved by the Father, I'm going to love the Father back. This is a, an initiating love on her own behalf. And so again, the pendulum could swing to be, you know, I'll love God when he loves me, or when I feel his love on me, then I'll re worship him, or when he does good things for me, then I'll do good for things for him. Uh, I wanted to just talk about the other side of the swing, so to speak, and, and say there are seasons in our life where we don't feel his love, we don't feel his presence, we don't feel <clears throat> an anointing on our life, and yet it calls for us still to, to love on him, to bring our gifts, our, our sacrifice of praise to him, to, to be the initiator of a love relationship with, with Jesus. And, and I know, I'll be honest with you, 95% of my life is, is he responds first, he moves first, and then I respond. <clears throat> but there comes a time in our life where there's this 5%, so to speak, where, where, it's, where we don't feel it, and we don't, it's not like, there's not an anointing moment, anointed moment, there's not a, a move, there's not a worship team behind us as we're, you know, walking down the airport, and, <clears throat> uh, you know, after a long trip, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's us and God alone, and it, and it requires at times for us to initiate a heart that moves towards Jesus and says, I want to minister to you. I want to give my heart to you. I want to give my, my time, my energy, my resources, <clears throat> my, my love I want to give to you. And so we see this, <clears throat> this woman doing that. And then here's the question then. Um, the, the Simon, who was the owner of the house, um, <clears throat> it appears he was not forgiven much. It's almost like he's kind of a good guy. Uh, that's, I guess I would relate more to that guy. You know, I don't have the, the testimony of the sinner on the street or the gang member or the drug addict, things like that. Some of you in this room might have had that history, and so you can relate more to the woman here who loves much because she was forgiven much. 
Uh, but I want to speak to those of you that maybe grew up in a good home and you're, you've been moral for a really long time and you've been living sort of a, a godly lifestyle <clears throat> that really this story has a, an unusual twist to it that you probably see as you read this. You, is, is, is When Jesus is asking Simon these questions, <clears throat> it's, it's a list. It's three different times he says, when I came into this house, you did not do this for me. Wow, okay, that's chalk went up against me. I didn't do that. Secondly, and, and she did this, and you didn't do this. Why? Wow, yeah, I didn't do that either. And then, then she washed my feet and kissed him, and you didn't do that. So at the end of this, I think Jesus is subtly trying to tell Simon, as I tell this story about somebody who's forgiven much, maybe it's actually not her, maybe it's you. <clears throat> maybe you need to see <clears throat> you're the one who's been forgiven much because it's so easy when you're brought up in an environment where your life almost could have been lost because of your sin, to be very thankful, but when you grew up in a Christian home or when you've, or where you've been in a Christian environment for a long time, or maybe even when you work in a Christian ministry, it's so easy to see ourselves as the one who has been forgiven little, therefore we love little, and the transition that Jesus introduces to Simon here, he, he would have us be introduced to us as well as to say, <coughs> you know, um, Maybe those who are forgiven much are, are the ones who are falling at your feet, Jesus, and they're the ones who are wiping your feet with their tears and their hair, and they're the ones who are dropping out the, the, all their anointing oil on your, on your feet, and I'm the one who's kind of watching that. Uh, but I realize now that through the story, I realize I'm the one who's been forgiven much as well because I didn't worship you like they do, or I didn't, my heart didn't pursue you uh, f- fervently like others are, or, or I, I'm just going through the motions. I'm not... Uh, or I'm waiting for you to do something for me first that I could respond back, and I'm not initiating uh, a first love for you. I'm not honoring you by giving you all that I have. And so this, this simple story just really blessed me by, by saying that, you know, I'm, I really am, even though I grew up in a good Christian home, and I'm fifth or sixth, I don't even know, lost count, sixth generation pastor, minister in our family, um, <clears throat> I still realize it's like, oh, wait a minute, I have to look at myself as the one who's been forgiven much, uh, because I am no better or worse than anybody else. I'm not more of a sinner or less than a sinner uh, than anybody else. Uh, there's, it's not like the, the wild testimony of the street person or the, you know, the, somebody who was way out and living a wild life and, and my testimony of growing up. There, there's, you know, it's, it's, we look at that as, well, that's, that weights. Their, their sin is more than mine. I think in the kingdom it's like, okay, my self-righteousness, my, my pride, my lack of humility, my... my uh, self-interest, my ability to go days without number, without uh, depending on myself, without depending on the Holy Spirit, it, it weighs as, as much as somebody who's out buying drugs on the street corner. There really is, you now one may have more, you know, consequence, so to speak, in a, in a worldly environment, but both have consequence when it comes to be before the Lord. Who's, uh, who's forgiven much? And that's the good news about the story is, is it's not like, now we have to go like, oh, I'm such a terrible person. Like, oh, I've so neglected Jesus. The, here's a beautiful story. I close with this. It's an invitation. It's an invitation like to, that, that Jesus is, is it, in the story, I don't know if you read that, he, he does something strange. He's, he's, talking, he's talking to Simon, like Simon's over here, and it says he's talking to Simon, and he's telling him like, but, but it says in the story here, he looked at the woman, I'm sorry, Annie, <laughs> he, looked at, he looked at the sinful woman, but he was talking to Simon. I came into your house, Simon, and you didn't wash my feet. And he's back, you know, he's over there. I came into your house, Simon, and you didn't kiss, me, you know, you didn't anoint my feet with oil. You didn't wash me. You didn't. And so it's interesting that he's fixating on her, and Simon's kind of having to hear the story of someone who loves much. But then the story is for him, too. Yeah. So I close with this to just say to you that, that it's for us, that, that if you grew up in a good environment or you've lived in a Christian life for a long time and you've kind of come into a place so that you feel like, you know, I'm moral, I'm good, I go to work, I read my Bible, I pray, but, but that first love is missing, that zeal, that, that, that passionate desire to run to him, to, to, to pour out at his feet, then, then that's what he's here today to say, like, hey, you know, I may, see, I may look at the woman, but I'm talking to you. And for me, as I, this was convicting to me. It's like he's talking to me in the story about I didn't do this. I didn't, I didn't take every morning to come into his presence. I didn't take every morning to fall at his feet. I don't take every morning to say I'm saved by grace. As much as the worst sinner in the world, I'm saved by grace. Not of my own self, 
it's it's his goodness. So that's that was my heart for you. Uh, I just want you is just be a fervent, <coughs> crazy, radical, on fire, passionate lover of Jesus. Just just love on him, love him, love him, love him, love him. Just love him, love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Just give him everything you've got. Just just go crazy for him. Just when, on your break, just open up your Bible. Just like let there be a revival in this place. Um, you know, are we really that different than the Moravians who had 24-hour prayer meetings and just loved Jesus? You know, to some degree, we may have more business responsibility, but we are a ministry, and, and we are called to spread the flames of the, the passion for Jesus Christ, and we don't spread anything we don't have. You can't give away what you don't have. And so <clears throat> Jesus is saying to, to Simon here, it's like, you know, you can't give away love and forgiveness if you don't realize how much you've been forgiven and loved. And so let, let, let that love... Uh, and love on Jesus, love him. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just uh, I want to lift up my brothers and sisters to you. I'm not here a whole lot. Kelly's not here a whole lot. But uh, we pray over each and every single one in this room. <clears throat> and our prayer is, Jesus, that they would have the joy of a, of a job that brings contentment and exceeds their expectations. But we pray on a deeper level, God, that, that these people would just be so on fire for you, God that they would come to the highest point of their spiritual life they've ever been in. There'd be uh, uh, embers of a heart that has, has been uh, touched by, by the coals from heaven itself. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, we, we, would, we would just take a moment to stop. <clears throat> and uh, as we conclude our chapel time here this morning, we just conclude it by taking a moment to love on you, to tell you, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we exalt you. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Jesus, we, we, <clears throat> we, our hearts are, are, are reverent before you. You are the holy and anointed one. We give you thanks. Just whether it be quiet or even if you want out loud, just take a moment to tell him you love him today. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We minister to you now. Lord, we, we take time out of a busy day uh, to, to, to be like this woman and say, Lord, we fall before you and we pour out our heart before you. We don't have any uh, ointment or oil in our hands here right now, but Lord, we pour out our heart. We pour out our heart to you. We, we, we bow uh, reverently at your feet, and we just take a moment to say, we love you, Jesus. You are first in our life. And Lord, we, we, we want to be those who are forgiven much. And we even ask for you right now that if there be any sense in our life that we could be coming a little bit cold, a little bit lukewarm, maybe a little bit like Simon in the story who, who you would have to say you did not, wake up this morning with a, a, a hunger for me. You, you did not take this week and, and carve out time to, to minister to me. You, you did not, you did not, you did not. Lord, that's not, that's not condemnation, it's not shame, it's not guilt. It's an invitation. It's, you're saying you didn't, not because you're mad at us, but because you're reminding us of what we have available to us. And we have, we have an open heaven and we, we have we have Christ Jesus, our Lord and King, as, as one who is inviting. So, so we thank you for that invitation.